Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about URL parameters. So in this lecture I'm going to show you how to write code that displays any of the questions that the user wants to see. I'm also going to show you how you can browse through the questions as well. Uh, so uh, we do have our code from our previous lecture and it is open right here. So URL parameters basically um, refer to whenever you provide any parameter within the appda route, within the URL inside the appda route function call. So if we come here and if I say if I if I try to provide a parameter, the way that you provide pro, uh, provide a parameter sort of looks like an HTML element, but it is not. So I'm going to say it is going to be an integer and the parameter is going to be an index. So basically we want to provide this parameter and I'm going to pass an index in here as well. There we go. Now, instead of just grabbing the first item from this function, uh, from this database, the first question, we are going to pass in an index. So the index, whenever we provide it, we specify it with a type of integer. What this means is that whenever the user goes to this URL and then types in another slash and then provide in for, for example, two, the user is going to see a question a question that has an index of two. So which question has an index of two? It has the question, the third question has an index of two. So I'm going to save this file. So we have saved that. I'm going to run this and we are going to wait for it a couple of seconds. So it says, what is the most highly developed sense of a dog? And based on our logic, it has to be question number three. So question number one, question number two and question number three because it has an index of two these are like indexed based on like starting from zero index starting from zero so that's why we have question number one here question number two and this is question number three which has an index of um, two so now uh, if the user provides let's say zero this is going to be the first question if you try to provide question uh, index of one, this is question number two. If you try to provide qu index eight, this has to be question number uh, question number nine, which actually does not exist. So we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, and eight. So we don't have eight questions. And then what do we end up with? We end up with an index error. So whenever the user provides any kind of um, tries to access a question or an entity within the database that does not exist, the user is going to get an index error. Now, this is not a proper way of handling an index error. You can see that to an average user, this is meaningless. There is no meaning behind this. What is even an index? The user doesn't have any idea. So a better approach is to use a try block, try accept block. So I'm going to grab these two. So whenever these two lines, they throw an error, we are going to, we are going to catch that error within our accept block. So I'm going to say accept. Now, the only error that you need to catch is going to be this index error. And you might say, okay, the user might provide uh, a string instead of a, a number, right? What, what happens in that case? So in that case, any other error apart from the index, they're not going to be caught by this except clause, but they will be caught by the abda route because within the abda route, we have provided that it has to be something which has a type of integer all right so the so you, the user cannot provide a string if the user provides a string the error is going to be uh, applied is the error is going to be thrown automatically by the flask application so you don't need to really worry about that so let's um, just provide some space so in here the proper way to handle an error is to throw a 404 error which basically means that the user has made a mistake. And um, uh, first off, I'm, I'm going to import. 
another function and that is going to be called abort so abort is going to allow us to import uh, custom errors and show them for example 404 404 not found to the user so if I come here what I would like to show to the user is abort with what is the status code 404 so let's save that let's reload this so now instead of throwing all of that like nonsense to the uh, to the screen and show it to the user we basically have like a friendlier message it says not found the requested URL was not found on the server as you if you enter the URL manually please check your spelling and try again and then immediately the user is going to know okay that I have made a mistake so question one then zero then index two and then we have and then we have not found so and keep keep this in mind that this URL no longer exists because we added an integer at the end of it so whatever you pass in here whatever whenever you want to try to access this URL you need to pass in something like five question with an index of five is question number three and uh uh, just uh, the, uh, some uh, something that I need to show you that these 404 errors are also thrown within the terminal as well now in case you're wondering I am running this server before actually starting the recording of this video so before actually starting the recording of this video uh, let's say we are going to go to our next lecture and the next lecture is links in templates and I'm going to close the server and I'm going to say Python like uh, 12 links in uh, templates.py and before starting the recording I run this file and that's why you can see that whenever you you open the video whenever you go to any videos the server is already running because I've done that before actually recording the video just to save you like a couple of like a couple of minutes in my case in your case it might be like a couple of seconds so so if you're wondering about that that's where actually what actually happens behind the scene so I think we are done here this is the thing that I wanted to add in the next lecture I'm going to show you how you can add uh, like a more user-friendly way to browse through questions as well so see you then